Well, good evening, everyone. This is Writing on Air, and I am your host, Kevin Cook. I'm here with my stand-in co-host, Brandon. How you doing? Good. Good. Very happy to be here. Yeah, this is... Uh, oh, man, you've been here numerous times already. I think a couple of times standing in, you said. We were talking about it before that, and then uh, you've submitted a lot of work. Uh, yeah, I've submitted about three or four pieces, I think, and I've been on the show once live to discuss them, and then been on here a couple times to he's famous is what he's saying pretty much definitely definitely famous no not (laughs) no just he means not yet well anyways for those of you who don't know (laughs) moving on brandon for those of you who don't know uh this is writing on air and my show is uh dedicated to giving writers a area to air their writing so basically people submit to me short stories uh creative writing flash fiction um, stuff that's usually short enough to fit in within a 30 hour time, 30, 30 hour, 30 minute time slot, 30 <laughs> I hour. I wish we had a 30 hour time slot. I would go insane if it was a 30 hour time slot. I don't know if I could do that in one stint, but, uh, people submit to me these creative writing and these creative pieces and we air them, usually kind of pair them with music sometimes and then just discuss them. It's uh, it's not a critique show. I'll stress that we're not looking to say whose writing is better. This is just a spot to get it out in the open. Uh, I know a lot of writers struggle with kind of getting their stuff put on the air or, or just published and stuff like that. And so this is uh, could be a resume builder. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge for anyone who is uh, out there and wanting to participate. And uh, if you want to participate, if it sounds like something that is of interest to you, you can submit to me at write.onair at gmail.com. That is W-R-I-T-E dot on air at gmail.com. Yep. And uh, we have a Facebook page as well, Writing on Air. And all the shows are recorded on YouTube, Writing on Air. So you can find us pretty much anywhere. Where everywhere is what I'm trying to say. So please do submit because uh, that's where I get all the content for the show. You guys help me out and I give you a space to have your pieces heard. So we'll get right into it. This is uh, from a friend of mine. Um, This is Hannah's. And uh, it's not titled. I think she her theme is she likes to not title hers on occasion. So it's usually uh, no title. And um, I believe this is a poem. So we'll get right into it. Fingers wrap cautiously around the stem. Fuzz tickles the pads of the soft digits. They place the fragile yellow flower into the flared vase. Vibrant petals cast smiles onto passing faces. With every passing sunset, the once innocent flower begins to dim. Brown encroaches on the once lively leaves. The fragile crown of cheery yellow dwindles. One by one they crumble, drifting down to surround their glass prison. With every fallen petal, the beaming faces begin to morph into grimaces. Soon the last petal has wilted. The vase has run dry. Once soft and gentle fingers have become rough and calloused. They abruptly grab the decaying flower, carelessly tossing it into the trash, as if forgetting what it had once been. I'm going to petition her to make a title for that. I like this piece a lot. Yeah, it's... It's got a couple different layers to it. On one hand, it's just that classic thing that we all do. We buy flowers for loved ones, for holidays, for birthdays, whatever. And, you know, you stick them in a vase. They sit there and they wither, they die, and you tend to just toss them. Yeah. And at the same time, that that's just kind of life a lot of times is, you know, you have this new brilliant wonderful thing and then as time goes on it wilts a little bit looks a little bit worse for wear and eventually it's dried up it's gone and you toss the side yeah that and i'm looking at it's uh reading it again as you talked um once soft and gentle fingers become rough and calloused obviously there's a i i like to I'm feeling a little bit of like aging there too, just because this entire thing is going. So life is kind of, they abruptly grab the decaying flower. There's this, there's this really strong theme of what was once new is now no longer new (laughs) pretty much. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it seems like whoever has placed this flower in this face is aged along with it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. 
I love, uh, there's one line in here that says, surround their glass prison. Um, oftentimes, I've seen themes in writing where what keeps someone alive is also what is the most um, uh, trapping for them. Uh, and I like that element, surround the glass prison. Because if you take them out, they die at this point. So they need this prison to stay alive. It's a really weird duality where people with like maybe addictions and stuff like that, like you get that kind of dynamic. Um, and there's this also, uh, now that I can read the piece, there's a, a really interesting dynamic here between at the very beginning, the fingers that place this flower wrapped cautiously around it, very yeah. calmly, very softly. And at the very end, callous fingers just uh, oh, yeah. carelessly just... grab it and toss it aside. They have no regard for what it is or what it once was. They just grab it and toss it. There is no care. There is no caution. There is no... Oh, man, I totally missed that. Yeah, no yeah. No gentleness to it anymore. Yeah, it just becomes rough and callous is what it said. Abruptly grab the decaying flower, like, as if it's, I wouldn't say ashamed, but frustrated with, with the decay. Carelessly tossed it into the trash. Like, it's just, it's become a flippant thing. Yeah, frustrated or just uh, no longer really... Enamored with it, yes, yeah, appreciative enamored. of it. They uh, they don't care enough to be careful. Yeah. Oh, man, and I like how if you see it from like a, a stand, a viewpoint of aging, vibrant petals cast smiles on the fast, passing faces. That's kind of like the youth down there. With every mm -hmm. passing sunset, the once innocent flower begins to dim. And then by the end, as if forgetting what it had once been, that's on its own line. And if you read it on its own line, that could be age forgetting what it had once been well you you can also see that throughout this whole piece exactly what you were pointing out before uh innocence the innocence of youth yeah that that's listed there and then as the days go by becoming less and less innocent growing older we all become a little bit more cynical as we become age grimaced, yeah. yeah oh man oh this is such a good piece. I like it. Even even the color change, actually, too, I just noticed that. It goes from bright yellows to uh, darker browns as it goes. So it goes from vibrant to just, oh, man. Mm -hmm. Reading this poem is like watching a spiral down into, like, nothing almost, which sounds really depressing, but I promise it, it's not. <laughs> it, it's like watching a death. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it is. Carelessly tossing it into the trash. The death of something. The, the birth and the death of a life. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good note to end that one on. <laughs> we, uh, I should also state, too, um, we don't, uh, I should say, because we have before, but generally we don't read these pieces beforehand uh, to a large extent. We like to kind of experience this with the viewer at the same time. We more or less skim just to get a general feel for the piece so that we can pair it with the right music, the right yeah. tone, but we don't really analyze or really look into these we do we skim maybe the beginning a little bit in the middle a little at the end just so we get a general feel for the piece but yeah for the most part we're experiencing this right now with each other with you yeah the goal is to be all all fresh at the same time when we read this well thank you hannah this piece is fantastic and i'm going to keep petitioning you for more so get ready for that ha 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 i think uh the next piece is by her as well am i right yes yes it is also untitled uh, she has something that she might have had a title, but she's scratched out. So, so a work we'll, in progress. We'll call, we'll call it untitled, but untitled. looking for one by the looks of it. All right, well, let's get right into it. Have you ever been in such shock that you can't move? So angry that you cease to feel anything at all? So betrayed that you physically feel your fragile trust disintegrate. Becoming lost to the world. So many thoughts swirling through your mind. You can't seem to make sense of a single one. Your stomach cramps as if it could physically rid itself of this blackness. Toxins leach their way into every crevice of your mind. Desperately grabbing for any proof that it was real. Everything you find, you refuse to believe. You slip, sliding back into the sticky tar pit of second guessing and denial. Where your thoughts no longer run wild, for that is where you are safest. Where you can tell yourself it wasn't real, can pretend that you never lost that control, and can still feel. 
where you can tape yourself back together, and as long as you don't look too closely, you can't see the cracks. The glistening, jagged edges, sharp enough to cut, trying to make you react, taunting you, trying to force you to look, flaunting the images and words they are like a never-ending flipbook. For that is where the truth lurks, like a monster under your bed just waiting to grab you. I like that piece a lot too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Untitled. I'm I'm getting a lot of impressions of like it feels like a trauma. So there's obviously a really strong mm -hmm. theme of disbelief in that. Yeah. It it feels like someone trying to hide from something. Yes. And yeah. it feels like there's like this illusion to being made of glass <clears throat> with yeah. those sharp jagged edges. Yes. Uh that, you know, you were shattered like some mirror and that you tried to tape yourself back together and you can't bear to look back into what's there. Yeah. Because you don't want to notice the cracks running through the mirror. You don't want to see the image that you've created shattered and spider webbed. Yeah. It's a really good um, litmus of a, of a almost a mental anxiety, too, on how have you ever been in such shock that you can't move? How the how the mind handles these things, it kind of relapses into a safer spot. Says, well, if we just don't think about it, like the cracks aren't there. Where's that line with the um, the tape, where where yeah, you can tape yourself down. back together, yep. and as long as you don't look too closely, you can't see the cracks. There's so many times that I feel, I don't want to say we as humans because that's very broad, but I say maybe a lot of people when something bad happens, they just do their best to not deal with it. <laughs> I think we're all at fault of, at one time or another, having that breakdown, locking ourselves in our room for nights, and just having to shut down. Yeah. Shut, shut down hard. Yeah. Put the tape yourself back together, essentially. Glistening jagged edges. Oh, man. Sharp enough to cut. Trying yeah. to make you react. Which really makes me think of glass, those sharp glistening edges. If you've ever broken a plate or a mirror and you've, you know... When I was a child, I've tried to tape them or glue them back together, and it's never yeah. perfect. And there's always those sharp edges that if you run your hand over it, Instant. it's not a perfect surface anymore. Yeah. Uh, there's a line here, flaunting the images and words that are like a never-ending flipbook. That's another big one. Yeah. Just that constant spiral of whatever thought or whatever is an agonist in your mind, just consistent. And, no and this is what keeps bringing back to that image of like a broken mirror yeah. with like all those fractured, like minor images that yeah. you'll get. Oh man. There's, I mean, I almost like can smell the fear in this, like a monster under your bed, just waiting to grab you. There's, oh, I can't think of the word for it. Um, there's like a, a very childlike, uh, fear going on here essentially when you when you when you reference monster under your bed the only time we really think of that being scary is when you're little so to reference that on what feels like a very adult piece is showing that by the end of this piece that person is now reduced to like a child this this event has been so potent that it's just like a monster under your bed it's that terrifying and that is that is incredibly ooh, that's incredibly potent fear makes us all equal yeah, so betrayed that you physically feel your fragile trust disintegrate. Oh, man. Becoming lost to the world, so many thoughts swirling through your mind. That's another one, too. The mm -hmm. chaos of just, you try to solve every piece of that puzzle as quickly as you can, and it goes in millions of different directions. Some of them aren't even really lucrative directions, either. They just go in random directions all the time. Yeah, if you're pulling yourself in more directions than you can count and you don't know which one's right or which one's real or anything of the sort. Desperately grabbing for any proof that it was real. Ah, oh, the disbelief in this is so strong. Ah, oh, boy. It's a really beautifully written piece. Yeah. Hannah's uh, two pieces here really feel like they dwindled down to something like a very sharp point at the end, which, again, makes you think of the glass thing, too. Mm -hmm. Like, a, just a very... Yep pointed thing we'll get back to that at the end of our at the end of these uh shows we like to kind of go back and retouch on themes that we've seen that are really strong in, in the pieces so thank you hannah for that that was an untitled yes. one thank you very much yeah all right Whew. we'll come back to you i promise <laughs>
And this last piece is by a random submission. I think uh, the person didn't specify gender, but uh, he calls himself Aiden. So I guess to you, Aiden. <laughs> and let me see if there's a title of this piece. I believe it's called Upstairs. All right, here we go. Somewhere on the way, I lost a bit of crazy. Did you now? Who are you talking to? The rush is gone, and they can't hear me anymore. Of course they can't. He never lets them in. I'm tired and scared. Do you think he hears us? But they want me. They want me. But I've lost that. I don't think he can, and he doesn't understand. I want to feel right in her eyes and see the smile in his. What if they catch on? They won't. He never lets them in. Upstairs is unfinished and the compass is cracked. Unfinished, he says. What a strange color that is. The parts are wrong and the size won't fit. How dramatic. Somewhere I lost a bit of crazy I crave. Is this all right? No. Yes. It isn't over. He can find us again and again. He can hear us. Now, to make that a little bit easier, because <laughs> I can see what's going on with the poem, and so I read it uh, how it was it was being how I was seeing it. Uh, each, every other line is in. Uh, quotation marks so it's as if something is talking back and forth so there seems to be what looks like an author uh, the first line is somewhere on the way I lost a bit of crazy and there's a response in quotation marks did you now who are you talking to like someone is talking to the person who is who is speaking um, and it goes back and forth that entire time I was trying to show some inflection with my voice but it's it's hard if you can't see the piece any thoughts on it uh, it sounds like someone is literally going crazy yeah. L literally talking about, uh, later in, down the poem, talking about how upstairs is broken. Yeah. Uh, and how it's not finished. And unfinished. I think that's literally the human mind. It's, you know, upstairs is unfinished and the compass is cracked. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the moral compass, direction yeah. in life, what, but something is broken and something is wrong. Parts are wrong in size. Yeah. If you, if you just read the pieces that don't have the response, um, Somewhere on the way, a lost bit of crazy, something's gone, they can't hear me anymore. Uh, we don't know who they is. That's a very ambiguous thing, very open to interpretation. I'm tired and scared. They want me, but I've lost that. I want to feel right in her eyes and the smile in his, probably relating to friends or acquaintances or something, just a general social sphere maybe. Upstairs is unfinished and the compass is cracked. That's, I think, that key point that you're making. Like there's, there's yes. a problem going on in the mind and there's a direction that's been lost because you can't go anywhere without your compass, essentially. The parts are wrong and the size won't fit. That, again, is kind of saying the same thing as the upstairs is unfinished and the compass is cracked. There's just something off and, and something's not fitting right. Um, I like the response to that, though. How dramatic. As if, like, <laughs> the, the voices are almost critiquing the person speaking. In a way, I think that these unitalicized things hmm. the these sort of like internal uh i almost think of this as internalization and everything in quotes is the man speaking to himself almost right. in a way yeah. he's thinking one thing and understanding that something is wrong yeah and trying to think about that and then what he's verbalizing he or she yeah uh, is you know Oh, how dramatic! I'm, I, I yeah, must be imagining whatever. things. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting too, and I think we can confidently say he here because the the voices or whatever is speaking in parentheses references he. So we'll we'll go ahead and assume that it's a he in this piece. Well, the the reason I don't say he or she is mm -hmm. because there is a line here that uh, that talks about. Uh, right in her eyes and a smile on his face oh, I and, see. and see the smile in his. So I don't know if the speaker Hard to tell. is trying to say that uh, 
I want to feel right in her eyes, my eyes. Ah, oh, I see. Or if I and see his smile yeah, looking, being a female or the other or way around that I'm a man that wants to be right in her eyes and smile again. I see. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to tell on that one. Oh man, I like to if you if you read through it, there seems to be like a question or a response and then there's another response. So like there's one thing that is clearly a certain set of dialogue and then there's another one that's a different set of dialogue. And at the very end, the one dialogue is lost completely. And it's just three of the same, whatever is speaking in quotation marks. Is this all right? No, yes. It's like an unsure, but kind of, well, just unsure is the word for it. It isn't over. He can find us again and again. He can hear us. And the fact that there's no response right there is almost like there's a unification at the end. Like if you go yes. with your... It, it it seems like the internalization and the vocal became aligned. Yes. Yeah. And it's or aware at least. Yes, because it seems like maybe that maybe that's what was going on is that uh, the verbal speaker could hear the internalization, but not the other way around. Right. Yeah. Because it seems like the vocal speaker always responds to the internalized thoughts. Yeah. But not the other way around. Right. So. Whoever he is is trapped upstairs. Yeah. I think is trapped upstairs. Mm. And until the very end, he's not aware of what's going on outside. Yeah. Or inside or out. Yeah. It's so hard to tell which yeah. one is the inside and which one is the outside on there. Well, I almost think that the outside is the actual verbalization just because of the stylistic the choice. Because right. it's in quotations. It is a speaker. I see. I see. That makes sense, too. Whew. Aiden submits more. That's a good one upstairs somewhere on the way i lost a bit of crazy haven't we all <laughs> i think uh actually in a small funny tidbit one of my favorite authors ever ursula k Le Guin, um one of her quotes she has that this reminds me of is uh the creative adult is the child who survived <laughs> <laughs> that uh that sounds very true yeah that's she's a she's a wise woman i'm not i mean she's not paying me anything but definitely go check out her books she's a she's a good person yeah so okay let's go back and do this is nearing the end of our show the last couple six seven minutes here uh we generally like to go back and look at the pieces and i've tried to look at themes before that connect sometimes that's a hit or miss as brandon has told me and he's shaking his head very silently nope don't do it kevin uh sometimes it fits other times uh it doesn't fit <laughs> i'll just put it that I, way I, I will say this might be a week it does right yes this would be this would be a definite one and when he means that he means every week it's going to fit for sure wrong because <laughs> we don't curate pieces we we take what we get that is true so that we aren't true. always going to have synergistic pieces that's another point too we don't turn anything away unless it's uh it doesn't go with kzfr rules as far as cussing and explicatives goes and, and if and you can submit those kind of pieces as long as you're okay with us censoring yes yes if if your piece has explicatives we can just say bleep or just pause or yeah, we can say. work with you on how to edit that piece so that it's yes. radio friendly we generally don't turn anything away so don't be afraid okay so so far we have a piece on being in shock <laughs> with uh with we, the, we actually oh. kind of have two mental health pieces yes between upstairs and uh this hannah i, I wish i wish you had titles so like <laughs> referred to these individually yeah um uh, i guess we'll go with the first one we read and the second one just for yes easiest. the 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 second one of your pieces that we displayed, it seems to be this mental breakdown. Same yeah. with upstairs, this sort of person rec reconciling with being crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. And, you know, this mental breakdown at the same time. These are all really dark pieces. Yeah, We yeah. get a lot of these. I, I see, and that's the fun part, too, with writing. Generally, I think the these parts of the soul, if you want to call it that, come out often in writing. I would say the majority of the pieces that I get are very heavy pieces, um, by and large. There's there's other ones that are, are come in different shades and too, but yeah, these, these pieces are definitely very heavy this week, um, especially with two mental health pieces, one called Upstairs, which I feel, not to like pin down the author, but it feels like it's talking about a mental problem. Upstairs is obviously the brain, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, and then dealing with a shock that was to the brain and then being, so sorry, to separate the pieces. Upstairs was the one that was a discussion between maybe the same person possibly just in different uh thought processes i guess yeah uh and then hannah's piece which is something has happened and now they're stuck in their head 
Yeah, something essentially shattered their reality, and they're trying to put themselves back together. Yeah, exactly. And that's like a monster under your bed just waiting to grab you. There's a fear there. Um, That one I say would would say is probably unique for Hannah is the fear part of it. I don't I don't really sense that in the upstairs. Uh, Actually, towards the end. uh, Oh yeah, yeah, maybe there there no no not not that there's fear. There's almost joy because Ah. at the at the beginning of this piece, they start off by saying. I lost a bit of crazy. Mm. The last sentence that the uh, internalized speaker says is a bit of crazy I crave. Ah, right. It's almost like they're enjoying yeah. their time in outside of normal. I've lost it. Outside but I of want the normal. It. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And then the first piece we have, I would say, is dealing with uh, a decay of some sort life or a flower or or even a part of themselves um youth maybe it 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 seems to be talking about how age takes away picks away at you bit by bit yeah yeah is what i see there because you have the transition both in whoever is keeping this flower as well as the flower itself and this slow ebbing away yeah they abruptly grab the decaying flower. Also, the treatment is different. Yes. How we treat, I would say, the elderly versus youth. Youth is generally seen as, you know, it's very nice and, you know, very soft, gentle hands. And by the end, it's just like, ah, get out of the way. Um, there's a discard kind of factor there going on. So we have, like, again, this decayish, the youth, the aging, um, something is disappearing from them as time goes on. And then a mental health piece of something has happened to the person, and now they're in this just cyclical spot that they can't get out of that's terrifying for them and then a piece where there maybe is a questioning there's definitely a sense of craziness in the piece itself there's a dialogue between what seems to be the same person almost um and whether or not it's right and whether or not they're happy about it yes yeah whether they've lost it or found it and who are they it isn't over he can find us again and again is that referring to the crazy like is is this voice the crazy is this all right no yes all right maybe that's what it is maybe this voice is the crazy he lost and there's that separation and the end there it's become one again like has it come back it's so it's such an interesting piece oh if we had like seven more hours we need that 30 hour time slot i think i i I told you (laughs) all right when you said accidentally (laughs) i changed my mind we're gonna do a 30 hour time piece so uh buckle in folks here we go we're gonna go back into these (laughs) no we don't have enough pieces Uh, which once again guys please submit more yes please uh write dot on air at gmail.com that's w-r-i-t-e dot on air at gmail.com yes I, we, I would love to get more pieces please i yes. like reading these i you like talking about these contact me via facebook um i think there's a way to contact people via youtube probably not the best way to get a hold of me stick to the email and no. facebook i would say um writing on air facebook.com or something whatever that url is but you can find us on there um so again this is writing on air and if anyone wants to submit please this is you guys keep this show going and we are willing to work with any situation if you want to play your own music for it and record it anything which i believe you've done before brandon yes i'm wrote i was and the first and i believe the only one to do that first so and not the last hopefully yes hopefully not the last say. and if you're in the greater chico area and you yes. want to come on and talk with us it's oh, great having the author here so when we're saying all of these things, we can ask for we, we can see what mm. your intention was and how we're interpreting whether or not that's right or wrong in your eyes. Because interpretation there's, is there's fun. There's two parts. There's two parts to every story. Yes, interpretation is fun, but having an accurate interpretation is, is almost more gratifying, I think, in a lot of ways. So please do submit. Uh, I don't know if anything else I want to say? I don't know. I think that's about it. Write.onair at gmail.com. Hope everyone has a good night. Yeah. <laughs>